Can it really be? A stable Debian version which is almost up to date? Believe it or not, Debian 12, the latest release of the community developed operating system, comes with almost or even the newest desktop environments and packages. In fact, it is that new that many even consider switching to it. And why not actually? Like I said, it's a stable distribution, not to mention its long-term support up to 5 years, as well as being the base of many and probably most Linux distributions out there. On top of that, the kernel that it ships with also includes support for recent hardware. Even Intel Arc and the new AMD CPUs are supported. But of course, I wouldn't be making this video if Debian 12 was the holy grail for the Linux desktop. So let's talk about it. But first I'd like to remind you that you don't forget to give this video a like and if you're new to the channel, why not also subscribe? If you are here a second time already though, come on, just do it already. Alright, so for those of you who don't know it yet, Debian is one of the oldest Linux distributions which still get updated and has built a name for itself of being incredibly stable. Stable in the context of operating system means that new packages get tested through and throughout to make sure that nothing can cause an error which could potentially break applications or even the whole OS itself. It is also the main reason on why Debian is so popular on servers. It basically never crashes. Ever. But sadly, being stable also brings a huge disadvantage. Testing takes time. And I mean a really long time. It's no joke when someone tells you that stable distributions are outdated and get updated very slowly. Because that is the actual case. So for a long time, Debian wasn't really that great of a choice for desktop use, since most users don't actually care about that stability but want better support and new features. In fact, on desktops, stable doesn't really mean all that much. For example, how often does Windows cause problems in comparison to a so-called unstable distro like Arch? Very often it's really similar or even worse. But now, with Debian 12, it seems like you can get both, recent packages and being stable. Yeah, about that. See, part of the reason why Debian ships with desktop environments that are that recent is that they just did a really good job of making sure that they are stable themselves. Interestingly, the development pace seems to have sped up, while the amount of problems after a new release seems to actually decrease. It's quite impressive, honestly. That being said, even with all these new desktop environments, I still wouldn't recommend Debian to a newcomer, since it has a few rough edges which are there by design. For once, let's talk about the installation process, because out of all of the distributions that I've tried so far, Debian is probably the worst. But also sort of good? Bear with me. Okay, so their website is terrible, I'm gonna be honest. See, the thing is that on the regular download page you get an ISO straight away. However, I consider this ISO advanced for several reasons. For once, it is not an entire ISO and needs internet access to properly install Debian. And second of all, and that also includes the full installer, it is too powerful for beginners. Luckily for those, Debian also offers a live image with its own graphical Calamaris installer. And that's the one that you want if you either want to just try out Debian on a live USB stick or if you don't want to get too deep into the configuration details. You can already choose between several different desktop environments, which is kind of neat. Oh, and by the way, if you try out Debian and want to launch the installer afterwards, the password here is live. I, I literally have no idea why the live user even has a password, which is not mentioned on the website by the way, but okay. Apart from that, the Calamaris installer is actually kind of decent and it was no problem for me to set everything up. After the installation and the quick reboot, you can already start using your system, but you might notice that Debian actually comes with quite a lot, I'm gonna say, gimmicks out of the box. Like I don't know what you think, but the first thing that I do after every single Debian install is to clear out all of the applications and games that I don't need. Don't really know why they are there in the first place, but just be gone. 
Okay, so now let's talk about the things that Debian is very good at and what it is extremely bad at by default. Debian 12 has very recent packages and it basically feels like a native install of Fedora, OpenSUSE or any other distribution that ships with GNOME 43 or even GNOME 44. But things already change when we take a look at downloading software. For once, on many distros it is nowadays a custom that you can install Flatpak straight away. Debian does not offer this out of the box, so you first have to install it, add the repo and the software center plugin and just then you can use it. And this is something that Debian does by design. See, Debian is known to support open source software. And up until this point, they didn't even ship with any proprietary drivers out of the box, which did cause quite a lot of problems for many. I mean, how can you enable the non-free repos containing the driver for your network card if you have essentially no network card? While Debian 12 now includes crucial drivers by default, it is still designed to refrain from proprietary applications, which FlatHub offers in a wide variety. Another thing that we need to talk about is, of course, updates. While Debian 12 is very updated at the moment, it does not stay that way. For example, the next GNOME release will be GNOME 45 in probably less than half a year. Debian will still be on 43. Half a year after that, there will be GNOME 46. Debian will still be on 43. And the same goes for Plasma, the other desktop environments and many applications. Sure, Debian releases security and minor updates to applications and drivers, but the main operating system itself does not really change all that much. It is stable as it is. So in comparison to other Linux distributions, it has disadvantages in user experience, overall performance, especially in gaming, and the general application suite, while massive, will be quite outdated until the next big release. On the other hand, however, you don't need to care about updates breaking your system or messing up dependencies. Debian Stable is a great distribution for just workstations, for building your own distribution or to serve as a virtualization platform. It is a base distribution, which does not break if you just use it normally, but it also doesn't hold your hand when you go under the hood. If you are someone who likes the newest and greatest, are a gamer or even just browse the web, then Debian will probably not be the right distribution for you and you're better off with something like Ubuntu, Linux Mint or Pop! OS. However, if you use your system for production use, for example for video editing, 3D modeling and similar, or you want to experiment with your system while also maintaining a stable experience, then it is home for you. It is still Debian after all. In conclusion, don't just hop on the Debian 12 hype train and install it straight away as your main operating system. Think first of what you actually want to do with your system and then decide. Just because it is new now does not mean that it is new in a year or so. Debian is great at what it is, a stable and reliable distribution a great foundation to build upon and one of the best ways to build your ultimate workstation. But it is definitely not suited for everyone. Just think about that. If you've liked this video then please make sure to show it with a like and if you're still here then why not also subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more videos like this then you can already continue by watching this one next. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.